and welcome. This is Melissa Arma with the Stock Swoosh, and I'm reviewing the year-to-date advanced trader tracking results for the trading room. These are equity trades, day trades. You would need a margin account to do these trades. So the results so far year-to-date, we are into not quite the last week of November. We got one more week left in November, then the month of December. So, so far, a pretty good year. $579,002 year to date. Uh, it's been a very good year, and I'm looking forward to December, hopefully to close out the year very, very strong. If you have questions, you can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. You can call me at 929-3200-GAP. Follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, or Skype. So the next earnings season begins in January. If you want to learn how to trade, how I make the picks, and join the room, you would have to sign up for the Golden Gap course. It is a prerequisite to join the room to take my class. Why? The trades set up very fast some days, and you have to know what you're doing in order to be successful. I'm really molding people to become good traders. I think that means learning it. It means having conviction. It means understanding what's happening in the chart. Again, I what I do, everything that I do is based on gaps, and it's advanced technical analysis in gaps. I'm looking at the gap, and we're trading momentum, and that's how you can make profits like this. I think it's also important for people getting into the end of the calendar year to think about where they want to be in 2022. What goals do they want to accomplish in 2022? If you did not make money this year as a trader, if you are not successful this year, if in fact you are down for the year or lost, then you've only got one more month left in the year. So I say plan for 2022. Make a decision, have a plan of action. How are you going to get there? How are you going to get to the next point in your life? It's extremely important to have a plan if you want to accomplish your goals. And I think a lot of people don't plan ahead. I plan ahead so much <clears throat> that I plan in the morning when I get up before I, what I want to trade even before the market opens. Like today, I know exactly what I'm going to trade and it is two and a half hours before the open. So, you know, planning is important. It helps you become more successful. So we started out the year again. The first quarter earnings season is at the beginning of the year. There's four quarterly earnings seasons, and we get a lot of gaps in earnings seasons, and that doesn't mean that we don't trade in between. We absolutely do. We absolutely do. And there's some late earnings that happen, like even in December retail. But as far as the meat and potatoes and the time when we really, really are busy, we have lots of gaps, it's during earnings season. But I will do gaps on earnings. I will do gaps on news. I will do market-related gaps. I will do sector gaps. I will do all kinds of gaps, but we get lots of gaps in earnings season. And that's why it's important to be part of the group. So you could take the class in December. Last class of 2021 is December 18th and 19th. And then you could start trading and then get in the room in January. So we started out the year. Boeing was a winner. Spy lost. Facebook, two tries and that it did not work. Oh, that we did a lot this year, though. Now that I think about it, <coughs> Facebook was something that just came up a lot this year for some reason. BYND was a winner, Apple winner, BYND two shots, ended up making money in that, BA one, CCL one. We did not do CCL a lot this year. We did it a lot last year. Twitter lost, Facebook lost, Boeing lost. You can tell the days I'm having a hard time where I do too many trades. In an ideal world, I do one trade a day or two. That's the perfect day for me. Then on the 12th, we did Netflix and CCL. The easiest days, the biggest days I've ever had is one trade and done. And that's preferred. You can see that this week. Uh, Boeing won, Twitter won, Wells Fargo, big winner. Close the 18th, Twitter won, Netflix. It's called a retake. I reviewed that in the class. That worked. UAL was a winner. IBM has been a nice one this year. Winner. Apple winner. Verizon, small winner. Boeing winner, spy big winner, no trades on the 28th. If something doesn't rate per my system, I don't do it. I don't do anything. We just, I review a lesson that day. Spy lost Facebook one on the 29th. And then on February 1st, no trades. UPS lost in the second. Spy was a winner. Two shots in the queues in the third. QCOM won, spy lost, and then a break even. Same thing with QCOM. That was a difficult day in the fifth. Diamonds was a winner. IBM lost and Apple in the ninth. We don't have many losing days, but sometimes we do. I never have a losing week. Uh, ACAM lost, Twitter lost, and then a big winner in Twitter. Oh, gosh, I remember that Twitter. That was February. 
We haven't done Twitter in a while. I gotta look at that again. Spy lost save one on the 11th. Disney lost on the 12th. And IBM, big winner in Twitter on the 12th. Close to the 15th, nice winner in Twitter. On the 16th, no trade 17th, Walmart, good winner. Twitter again, winner. Boeing lost to Walmart one on the 22nd, no trades on the 23rd. Spy lost on the 24th, then one. Twitter lost Disney, nice winner. BBY did not work, or Twitter on the 25th, DPZ did work. Foot Locker winner, Spy winner, DDD winner, Ross winner. And then two trades in the spy in, in March. And then GPS lost and Facebook on the 5th. Facebook lost. Apple won. Stitch Fix, good winner. This is March 9th, getting into the third month of the year. Spy lost. Stitch Fix won on the 10th. Oracle was a winner. Another winner in Oracle. Lily, Spy, and no trades on the 17th. You see here how, again, you only need one thing. I try to do a trade as quick as I can in the first 30 minutes of the day. Get in, get out. I call it chunking it out. How do you put together a year like this of over half a million dollars in profits? Chunk it, chunk it, chunk it, chunk it. That is how you pull together a year. Sometimes people are so obsessed on one single trade or even one single day. But I really find people are obsessed on one single trade. You have to look at the bigger picture. Week over week, month over month, year over year. Apple was a winner in the 18th. Nike was a winner. No trades in the 22nd. Wells Fargo didn't work. Apple lost. Boeing, big winner. GIS won. Q's lost. Netflix won. Apple won. Spy lost. And then a winner. Facebook lost. And Apple winner. JPM was a good one on the 29th. Then to close out March, Apple won and Lulu. I think Lulu is coming up again in December. Off for the week of the first week of April. No trades on the 12th. Fast loss, Apple won, SPY won. BBBY break even on the 14th. C lost, Apple won on the 15th. 16th, MS lost, Boeing was a winner. We did Boeing quite a bit this year too, not as much as last year. Stock's trying to come back, it hasn't yet. 19th, no trades. IBM won, that was a good one too, the 20th. Netflix, two shots, that didn't play out right. Set up better the next day, LVS loss, INTC was a winner, no trades in the 26th, UPS was a big winner on the 27th. Save loss, Starbucks won, and Microsoft, big trade on the 28th. eBay won in the 29th. Twitter needed a retake, then it worked. Then we did Twitter on May 3rd. Good trade in Microsoft May 4th, no trades on the 5th. Spy loss, Uber loss, Netflix loss, Etsy won. And then BYND, just could, did not set up right. That was very difficult. Shaq was a big one on the 7th. Q's won on the 10th. We did the market a lot this year. The market, the market had a lot of good setups this year. What can I say? 11th, here you can see. When I start out the morning, it's a tough morning. Over trading is never, uh, never good. That's why I don't trade all day. That's why I don't trade all day. <clears throat> we shut the run down. If we're done at 9.45, the room is closed. If we're done by 10.15, boom, we shut it down. Take the trade, make the money stop. You can tell the easiest, easiest things, we're in and out of something in five minutes, 10 minutes. Then on the 12th, Microsoft needed two shots, but worked. Spy was a big trade. Babbitt didn't work on the 13th. Target, huge winner on the 13th. Disney won, Microsoft won, and AT&T won on the 18th. This was May. Spy lost, Q's lost, AA, big winner, spy break even. 20th was Cisco did not work. KSS worked on the 20th. No trades on the 21st. BYND won. 25th was Apple lost Shaq. Shaq just did not work. DY was a big, big winner. Remember that falling? That was a short. Most of these trades are shorts. Some are longs, but most are shorts. I prefer to short. The class I do every month is the class to short, is the bearish gap class. I only do the bullish class once a year. It's just not as popular. The bearish class is extremely popular. I'm very good at shorting. JWN won, DLTR won, and HPQ won on the 28th. Then the spy lost on the first. Amber lost Apple big winner on June second. Off six to seven. Stitch fix lost. Q's lost. Apple won, and then a, and then another one in the stitch fix that worked finally. Campbell soup did not work or the Q's. Spy lost. Q's won. Microsoft won. The eleven CCL lost. Microsoft lost, and Lily was a good one. Apple won in the fourteenth. 
no trades of 15th, Oracle 1, no trades of 17th, JPM 1, SPY 1, no trades in the 21st, Apple lost, and then retake was a big trade. Sometimes it happens. Uh, Q's 1 on the 23rd and KBH on the 24th. FDX was a winner on the 25th. SPY lost, Q's 1, no trades on the 29th. Apple 1, STZ break even. Mu was a winner, Apple was a winner. And then off for July 4th week. The week of the holidays, it's never a good idea to trade. <clears throat> you always get uh, low volume, which is problematic. And then on top of that, you just don't get enough movement in stocks. So it's always good to take a break. Like we're, we're off this week for Thanksgiving towards the end of the week. BA1, BAC was a winner. No trades on the 15th. Q's lost, Netflix won. Diamonds was a winner. No trades on the 20th. Netflix was a winner on the 21st. LVS won, INTC won, LVS won, UPS won, Microsoft lost, Cake won, PayPal won, PayPal won. This was a good period in here. Winner, winner, winner. Nice to have that. The no trades on August 2nd, T2 won on the 3rd. CVS lost, CCL lost, and SPY was a big winner. Market's been very bullish this year. Most of the market trades in here are long. Summer shirts, but most are longs, to be honest with you. Etsy lost on the 5th. CVS won. EXP was a winner, Boeing was a winner, and no trades on the 10th. WW won, Baidu won, Disney lost, Baidu won, CCL lost. Baidu was a winner, and QQQs was a winner, and BA won on the 17th. So you can get into these periods where, again, you're just on a roll, but you always got to be careful every single solitary day. Target lost on the 18th, Boeing lost, Qs won, and BA was a huge winner on the 19th. No trades in the 20th or 23rd. Again, this isn't like a regular job. Sometimes you get up in the morning, make a huge amount of money. Sometimes you get up in the morning, there's nothing to do. You can't force it. If you force it, you will lose. AAP lost and Apple lost on the 24th. Urban won and JWN won on the 25th. DLTR won. Peloton won. No trades and Zoom was a winner on the 31st. We are looking at Zoom actually today. Zoom reported last night, it actually got crushed. <clears throat> It's top launch for today. We'll see if it sets up right. September 1st, no trades. Chewy lost, Boeing lost, Zoom lost in the second. Chewy then was a retake that worked. Spy lost, BYND, huge winner on the third. Boeing won, Spy lost, a big winner on the Spy, then no trades in the ninth, off for my birthday that week, then in September, and the 20th was a big winner in the Qs. We really did do the market a lot this year. September 21st, no trades. FDX, winner on the 22nd. Then we tried it the next day. It didn't set up right. We had to do a retake. Nike worked. Q's was a winner. Apple lost. Q's huge winner on the 28th. <laughs> these, the market has had some huge trades. And even some of the options. Again, these are margin trades on equity trades, but some of the options have been big this year in the market too. 29th, no trades. KSS, winner. October 1st, no trades. Facebook won on the 4th. No trades on the 5th. Facebook Loser, Q's loser, NVIDIA, another one we did a million times this year. October 7th, big winner. No trades on the 8th, closed on the 11th. Facebook lost, and then another winner in Facebook that needed a retake. 13th, closed. Boeing won. Facebook won. Z won. PG lost. Nice winner in Apple and the Spy on the 19th. Break even on the 20th. I don't know what the heck we did. What the heck did we do that day? I don't have it. <laughs> Then what the heck we did? What the heck did I do on that day? Let me look it up. What did I do on? Let me just see if I can find it. Oh my god, I'm laughing so bad. I don't know what I did on that day. I forgot to put the dicker symbol. What was that? The week of the 20th. Hold on here, let me look it up. That is too funny. 21st, we did IBM, remember that. INTC and Facebook were winners on the 22nd. What did we do? Apple, Apple. Apple was a break even on the 20th. Hmm. I'll have to go back and look at that. 
Okay. I knew it was something. All right, so then we did IBM was a winner on the 21st, 22nd was INTC, and Facebook was a winner. 25th, Facebook lost. BYND lost. Facebook was break even. Apple won. Q's lost. Spy lost. Then another one into Facebook. Again, we went after that a lot this year. It didn't work the day before, but worked in the second day. Microsoft lost. TXN lost on the 27th. Big, huge winner of Microsoft on the 27th. Uh, off for Halloween, SPY won, ZG won, CTX lost, IBM, massive winner. That was a nice start to November. November has been a phenomenal month. Phenomenal. Peloton lost, and then B was a big winner in the 5th. Peloton won in the 8th. PayPal won in the 9th. No trades in the 10th. Disney won in the 11th. No trades on the 12th. BA was break even, and then a BA winner on the 15th. HD won on the 16th. Target lost, huge winner in V on the 17th. Cisco won in the 18th, and the 19th was a massive winner in Foot Locker and the Qs. We have had, I think November actually was the best month of the year so far. And that's just all around, day trades and options trades. Again, we're just going over the day trades here, but November is like everything I touch is turning to gold in the month of November. And the gaps are there. And the gaps are there. So when it's there, you've got to take advantage of it. When the big moves are there, you've got to bank bank the money and you've got to take advantage of it. Anyways, starting out the year with an average, most of the trades are $2,500 risk and I bumped it up a little bit here recently. So the average risk you could just bank on as being $2,700 a trade. You can risk less. You absolutely can. You do not need to risk that at all. You can start out with a beginner risk. You can risk $100 to $150 on a trade. Again, these trades are on margin, so you need a margin account to day trade. To actively day trade, you must have that. If you don't know anything about that, you can call me and ask me questions or email me. I'm not a broker. You have to call a broker and find out. What do you need to open up an account on margin? You can trade at a prop place, you can trade at a retail place. They offer different uh, fees. They also offer different amounts on margin they will give you on your cash and different deposit amounts to open the account. Uh, and you gotta find out, are there platform fees? There's all kinds of things that you have to ask questions to a broker. But the main thing is to learn the system. After you learn it, then you can learn the platform, then you can trade in a demo, then you can start out slow, and then you can increase your risk as you're making money. But let's just talk a little bit here about margin. A $40 stock price, for example, if you took 200 shares, would be, you would need what? 8,000 in buying power. That's not 8,000 in cash. That's 8,000 in buying power, BP, okay? You could take that amount with a $2,500 prop account. So if with a $2,500 prop account, you'd get 10 to one at a prop place. You'd have 25,000 in BP, so 8,000 would be enough. You follow me? Anyways, let's just say you shorted it for a buck, got a dollar, shorted it at 10, dropped down to nine, okay, for example, or anything, or shorted it, shorted it at 40, I'm sorry, dropped down to 39, you would make what, $200. So $200 a day is an average of $1,000 a week. Many, 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 many people trading, and many people that I talk to that inquire about the class, some of whom have been following me for over five years, which is ridiculous, have, who have never signed up, I don't know why. It's so crazy how long people follow me and it takes them forever to make a decision. You know, that's 52 grand basically a year. That is nowhere near what some people are making in the market. And that is a nice chunk of money to make for a part-time job on top of your regular job. I don't know how many people can live on 52 grand a year, but it's certainly a nice chunk on to extra, extra money on top of your regular job. And think about it. If you can make $52,000 a year trading the first year, the next year you can make 100 and so on and so forth. You can start trading with a beginner account and then you can take it up. The only difference is your amount of size, but you have to know what you're to do. You have to understand the system. In order to have financial freedom, you have to be responsible for yourself. You have to take risks. You have to be independent. You have to say, this is something that I really, really wanna do. I always say to people, how badly do you want it? People whine and complain they've traded, lost money in the market, taken classes, not learned how to train. You cannot continue to go over things that happened to you in your past. If you are stuck in the past and living in the past, you're never going to move forward and you're never going to move ahead. What happened before, you cannot change. You can change and take control of your future and today and decide right now that you want something different for your life. The decisions that you make right now today are very important because you cannot change the things that happened before. And so many people live in their past mistakes or trading losses or classes where they didn't learn anything. I don't know why traders really, really have an issue with that, um, but you gotta let it go. You gotta let it go and you gotta decide that you're gonna move forward.
So my class information is high level of information. It's a full on two day class. Again, last class of the year is in December. You will learn in my class the rating system, which is a reason for my success. I rate the gap and that's how I determine if it's gonna work or not. If it rates 20 points or more for the 26 point rating system, you take it in the direction of the gap. December 18th and 19th is the last class for 2021. Class tuition is $69.99. Everyone pays it, everyone pays the same. That's it. Class is online. You can be anywhere in the world if you want to take it. Email me for forms if you want to sign up. We're in a period right now in this world where you have to take control of your financial future. If you want to do the combo, the trends class is Tuesday the 21st. You save $500 if you sign up for this at the same time. I'm very good at what I do. And I know that many of you know that because you've been following me for so long. So it's really a question of whether or not you're going to sign up this year or wait till next year. And, and I'm working on some very, very, very exciting things for my own personal future career wise. We'll see what 2022 brings. Interesting that some of these things are happening right now to me into the end of the year. Uh, more information on that later. But I'm excited about 2022. I think it's going to bring a lot of surprises and it's going to be the culmination of a lot of goals and a lot of dreams I've had. I've been working on for a very, very long time. Sometimes things that you want to happen, like becoming a successful trader, do not happen at the exact time that you want it. Sometimes they don't happen immediately, and very often they don't. But it doesn't mean you give up on your dreams, and it doesn't mean you give up on your goals, and it doesn't mean you have a negative attitude because you're working against yourself if you do that. The world can be a negative place. Don't work against yourself by being negative about your own life. Think positively. You can do it. I'm teaching people how. People are finding success and making money, and it's been a very, very good year. If you'd like more information, like I said, about the class, go back here. You can email me at melissa at thestockswish.com. Have a great week, everybody.